Hello, this is Doris Sander, and when I posted this junk journal um, a couple weeks ago, I had several requests on how to make it, and I think I've mentioned before, I don't know, but I'm not very good at being creative on camera, uh, but I can certainly create on camera. There's a little bit of difference in that, maybe. <laughs> um, but anyway, I am just using, I'm going to use this junk journal as a template to make a second one and try to show you the process um, on film. So I've basically just gone through and pulled similar um, items and cut them down to size to make a second one. And so this one was with my May Coca Daisy kits, which were very vibrant um, and a little bit tropical. And this kit was uh, my April Coco Daisy kit, and it's a little more subdued and slightly monochromatic. There's a lot of blues and a touch of pink, uh, but it's still, it's beautiful, another beautiful kit. So let me just go ahead and get started. And I've been kind of intimidated at the idea of trying to get it all done in a video and I just had the revelation today, right before I started, that I don't have to do it all in one video. So, this first video, I'm going to do the major assembling of the junk journal, and then I will have a follow-up video where I add the finishing touches to it. So, be looking for that in a couple of days from now. Well, not from now, from whenever I post this first one. <laughs> Anyway, let me just go ahead and get started. I've already cut the um, foundation pieces down to size and collected what I needed and yada yada. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting things together. The cover is, um, I better measure it again because my memory is not serving me well. Yeah, eight, eight and a quarter tall and eight and three fourths wide. I've made it to fit inside a Midori style insert traveler's notebook. So, and I said this in the first video, but you want to make the outside cover just slightly bigger than the interior pages because I was looking and once I get this bound, there's still going to be almost an eighth of an inch difference in between the outer cover and the, the inside page. So you can see the pages will start, um, if you make them all the same size, they'll all creep out from inside the cover. And that's not necessarily a great look. So anyway, this first one... Um, I had a 12 by 12 piece that had little images and I've cut it across and folded it and I'm going to make pockets out of those. So this one will, I'm going to try to stay on camera as best as I can, but this one will need to be trimmed down to here. I'm going to be all technical and just fold it there. <laughs> I'm going to trim that one down so that it'll fold nicely now and fit inside the book. And this washi tape isn't from the Coco Daisy kit. I think I got it from Freckled Fawn quite a while ago. But I thought that it was a nice match. I actually thought about it because um, we got exclusive washi tape. Let me see if you can see that. In April. And it was this plus sign. It was really pretty. So that's what made me think of it. Because this one is the plus sign too. So, 
and I need to do the bottom. Actually, I'm going to tape this side first and then do the bottoms together. Then I'll just tape it. This side, it doesn't really matter how far up the washi goes. So I guess this side doesn't really either. Try to get it kind of straight. So I'm just taping the bottom up. You can see that'll just fit in the spine there, and it made pockets there. So like a business card fits in there nicely, and a regular tag fits in there nicely. So that'll be super fun. So there's one. And then this one is ready to go. And I have this little card to add to it as a tip in. And I think maybe I'll use this washi. This came with um, my Coco Daisy as well. Um, but it was. May and Coco Daisy has been having a lot of exclusives. They added the washi tape two or three months ago, so every month you get, I think it's in the planner kit that you get the exclusive washi tape. So I have that, and then this is just some paper pad that I had. So I'm going to. Just tape down the seam of this one, and I'll go ahead and use this one again. Try to make it straight. And I think I'll just go ahead and put it down this side as well. I'll go ahead and fold it again. I like to fold each piece individually when I'm making a, an insert because I think it makes the it makes the book lie flatter toward the back because a lot of the ones that people have made um, mass produced, but but individually, not by a major company, but individuals that like sell them on Etsy or whatnot, um, they've like manually folded all the pages at once and they get really puffy in the back. I just think they're better if. They're folded individually. So this one I had on my first one, I had a little, this is just um, product packaging. I hope that you can tell. <laughs> I don't know how well you can tell on the camera, but this is just product packaging from some stickers or embellishments. And I just had, um, adhered it and my tape's not sticking to the glass seam very easily. I think I'm not on camera either. So you know if you have double stick tape that might work better. But anyway. So I just stuck that on there. 
and it makes a fun little pocket. And then this is just another little insert. And I thought it would be neat to put some of the stickers on there, but I'll do that later in the next video. So I'll set those aside for now. And then this page was this one. And in the original, I just left it longer and folded it over, but I got scissor happy and, and didn't think about it. And I forgot to leave extra, but that is no big deal. I'm just going to washi tape the page back on. So, I think I will use this washi again. It's just very neutral. I mean, it's not a very pronounced color, so. Not going to detract too much from the butterflies. So, oopsie. Um, I can already tell here that I should have put the pocket on after the washi tape. So, I would suggest first, I would suggest that you remember and just fold it over yourself. But if you don't, then I will put the washi first before you put your little glassine pocket on. But you know, it's no big deal. It just looks junkier, right? Because it's a junk journal. Now I'm going to washi tape the top and bottom. On the original, I don't like that piece. On the original, I um, stapled the top and bottom, but I thought since I was using washi here, I would just continue that trend. So then that makes a little pocket there. It's fun. And on this one, I did put a paper clip because it was such a narrow. Um, little pocket that I thought things might fall out and it was buckling a little but this one since it's wider you don't have the same issues so I don't need to add a paper clip but you certainly can because that would be super cute so and then this is just going to go on there for another little pocket idea and these um, glassine envelopes are also from Coco Daisy Kits. They're product packaging, and I just save them all because I pretty much adore the look of glassine envelopes. And there's another one, and this one will make a pocket as well, um, but I'll do that later when I get everything assembled. And this one, this one's cut a little narrower than the other pages, and that's fun because then you can see peek, peek throughs. Um, and then these two, I think I'll use, let me make sure you can see. Um, I might use this plus one. I haven't used it yet. On there. I think um, I'll let this bottom one peek up a little bit, but I don't really want the top one to overlap, so I'm going to just cut it off. I think it'll be okay. So there's that one. And now these are just papers. Okay, this is another pocket that needs to be assembled. So the back is just regular. And the front is going to be pocket. And I think, um, I don't think 
I know. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I cut some of these pockets at an angle, so I'm going to do that again with this one. So that makes a nice, fun look. It's just nice to have, you know, some variety. I think I like this one. I've been using this one a lot, but it's okay. I like it. So, that's straight. to trim this side so it'll fold under nicely. Okay, so that's nice. I could seal that one if I wanted to. Hmm, I don't know. I guess I'll leave it. Okay, then this is just notebook paper trimmed down. Another piece of pattern paper. And then these are just a couple of uh, little sheets from my personal planner, also from Coco Daisy. I just thought they would add a little cute touch in the junk journal. Because the whole idea behind a junk journal is that it's made out of, you know, all sorts of random stuff that you might have. This one's, just, you know, made from a kit, so it's not necessarily the classic use of junk, but the word junk, but I still thought it would be fun to have a variety of papers in it. So there's that one. And let me check and make sure they're all done on the back side. This one needs to be folded in. I'll just put a little bit of washi on there that, you know, that can be pulled up, up and down so you can put stuff in the pocket because washi, you know, re-adheres fairly well. And then I think... I think this one I just really liked in here. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. As a tip in. Be cute. It says without chains there would be no butterflies. So it'd be nice to include a butterfly there. You know, I might this might have gone there. Yeah. Hmm. See, washi comes right off. Yeah, I think I like it better there. That was my plan. It just got out of order. Yeah, so then it goes with the butterfly idea. And then that's good. So now, oh, that's not good. <laughs> so obviously, you see how this one is so much wider than the rest? So that one's obviously a spot where I had intended another pocket so I'll just be technical and fold it again so I'm just gonna fold that down try to keep it straight as best I can and I am going to staple this one hard to get a straight fold sometimes. Let's go 
better. And you see how that is buckling a little more than the other one? So I am going to add a paper clip to that one. There. Probably it needs to be, I lost it. Oh, there it is. It needs to be close to the middle. Yeah. So now that's done, and I'm just going to check and see how the edge is looking. So, you can see a lot of peakage in there, but. Actually, this is already 21 minutes. Is that a problem? Ooh. I really feel like I need to show you how to trim these down. Okay, so first page is fine. The second page I can't really fix because it's it's a special pocket page. Um This page could be trimmed down a hair, and these definitely, and yeah. So let me trim those a little bit. So this this is just packing paper, and it's very thin. So I'm just going to trim those two together just a little bit so that it won't peek out. And this one, I'm going to trim just a smidge off the edge, and probably this edge too, I didn't check, but I would assume. So there's those two. Yeah, and that looks quite a bit better. I mean, it's still not perfect, but it is a junk journal. So you need to expect it to be an imperfectly charming item. So now I'm going to clip the two sides together. Actually, I'm going to clip it while it's open. I think that'll be better. These clips, I think it'll do better with these because they'll reach farther. that'll hold it well enough and then this is um, this is a paper piercer and a piercing pad and this is basically a high-rise mouse pad and a needle on a stick so you can improvise and I'm just going to, I'm going to start out with one hole in the middle and then add the two holes about equal distance and then two more. And then this is just cotton thread on a needle and I shifted that page already so it's okay so I'm gonna start here this time and I'm gonna start on the outside because I want my bow to be on the outside if you want your knot to be on the inside then start with your tail on the inside so basically you just keep hopping along the holes and 
And this one is giving me fits. sure your tail doesn't you gotta keep pulling it out yeah just all keep alternating which hole you go in and out and up and down from the last hole doesn't want to be cooperative it did it to me last time too but be patient and persevere Okay, so once you have the first one, then just start your way back up. Oh no, I have a knot. That could be bad. It's a good thing I noticed. Almost, baby. I'll be right there. Sorry. I got distracted with my kid. Yep. So just hop up and down. And then when you get to the top, I'm going to go ahead and trim my string a little bit. Basically, you just tie it off and you want it to be as tight to the paper as you can get it so before you tie that second knot make sure your knot is flush to the page yep and then you can just tie it in a cute little bow and I'm going to go ahead, and I know I want it there, so I'm going to go ahead and double knot the bow so it won't come untied. So yeah, that's the assembly, and I will be back soon with some updates, like cutting that off. <laughs> well, maybe I'll cut it off now. Because, you know, the video is not 30 minutes long yet. So why don't I, you know, shoot for that goal? Yeah, I just, um, my pages weren't quite aligned, I guess. And so this, it's mostly just that packing paper piece that's hanging over at the bottom. So I'm just using my scissors and trimming it off. So yeah, that's pretty good. So... I hope you liked it and I hope my battery didn't run out and it recorded properly and I will be back very soon within a day or two hopefully with the rest of the process and I'll chat with you soon. Bye.